Right, hello there, good morning everyone, lovely to see you all. So, I want to just share with you some thoughts on Psalm 121 this morning. And it's, it's a psalm that is special to me, there are many psalms that are special to me, but this is one of them. And the words of it have just remained in my heart ever since, um, when I was in my teens, believe it or not, I used to sing in the, a Church of England choir, you know, with all the robes and dress up and all the rest of it. Very different worship from how we worship here today. But every week we used to sing or chant a psalm and Psalm 121 was one that we did quite a lot as I remember. But the words were just sown in my mind and in my heart at that time and and over the years since then, you know, at that time I maybe didn't fully understand the full meaning of what that psalm meant. But it has come back to me time and time again and the words have just been very special to me. So I want to just start by reading Psalm 121. And I'm actually going to read it in the New King James Version uh, for a change. And it's called, God, the help of those who seek him, a song of a sense. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? or Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So Psalm 121, it's entitled A Song of Ascent. And it's considered to have been written by King David, who we read a lot of in the Old Testament, in the Bible. And Songs of Ascent, they were sung by Hebrew pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem. And every year, the Jewish tribes would make their way from the surrounding areas to Jerusalem to celebrate different festivals. And on their way, it's thought that they would sing songs to encourage themselves, which is a good thing. And to get to Jerusalem from those surrounding areas, they would have had to have traveled through the mountains, which I imagine would have been very challenging. Um, You know, the sun, you know, would burn down. We we know the effects of the sun at the moment, don't we? How hot it is, how it can burn us, heat stroke, dehydration. Imagine at night it might have been a bit cold maybe, difficult to see where they were going. You know, the terrain would have been quite rough, I imagine. Um, Probably wild animals that might have attacked them. They would have had to carry their um, provisions and their water and they might have had donkeys, I would imagine, to help them do that, but they had to look after their livestock as well. Probably they had to be very vigilant because there might have been bandits ready to jump out and attack them and steal their possessions. So they had a lot to face and just traveling over rough ground and uphill would have been challenging. Now, I must admit, I haven't been to Jerusalem, maybe some of you have, so I I haven't first-hand experience of what it's like around there. I've just seen photos on good old Google. Um, So that's all I can go by, but I imagine it has its challenges. But I do love mountains and We love to go up to Scotland where there are lots of mountains and we've climbed one or two over the years. And just the challenge of climbing up on a good day and you get a good view when you get to the top is great. Um, I just want to share with you a few photos, holiday photos (laughs) in a way, um, of of a mountain that Gareth and I climbed uh, two or three years ago. 
And it, it just helps to sort of relate to some of the challenges that we face in our lives. And I think sometimes, hopefully, sort of by seeing things visually, it helps to relate to what God, what, what, what God wants to say in his word and to what I want to talk a bit about this morning. So this is a mountain in Scotland on the Isle of Skye. Let me just turn my clicker on. So this is a mountain on the Isle of Skye. Uh, and it's called Balaven, if you want to know what it's called. Uh, and it's, if you like to know heights of things, it's um, 3,048 feet high or 929 metres, which isn't quite as big as Ben Nevis, which is Scotland's highest mountain. That's about another almost 1,500 feet higher. But it, it's a big mountain, it's a big mountain. And we decided that we wanted to climb this mountain um, and we had done for many years, it just drew us. We just wanted to go up and look at the view from the top, which is supposed to be amazing, because you see all the coolings on sky, and it's fabulous. And we were staying very close by, and we thought, yeah, we'll, we'll go and climb this mountain. We had the perfect day for it. So we set off. Oh, no, sorry, gone too far. Right, so we set off on our walk, and uh, as we started to go along, it was quite an easy path, really. This is me and all my gear. Um, at the beginning of the walk and uh, the path was quite easy going it was a beautiful day and we could admire the beautiful flowers and the wildlife and just take our time um, and so the scenery the views as we started to look back were beautiful not a cloud in the sky and it's a bit like life I think sometimes you know we can we can coast along and it's not too challenging you know maybe a little odd challenge along the way but it's not too bad it was okay and then we started to, to go up. It was getting a bit steeper by this point. And um, it doesn't show it terribly well, but the path actually went sort of right by this deep ravine. Um, and the path was right on the edge. And you look down into these beautiful pools of water and waterfalls coming down, absolutely gorgeous. And it could be quite tempting just to sort of walk down to these pools if we, we could have done, but it was also very dangerous. And... Uh, it's a bit like life, isn't it, sometimes, you know, it gets a bit more challenging and, you know, it's a bit fearful walking on this path and sometimes some of the challenges I think we face in life can be a bit scary, we get a bit anxious, a bit worried about what's happening um, or we could be tempted into things that look quite attractive, the pools were attractive, we could have been tempted to go down there and, and just stay there and not bother climbing the mountain, um, but it would have been very dangerous and probably would have ended up in trouble. And that's a bit like life, you know, sometimes things can look very attractive and can lead us off course and we can be led into danger. Um, but we kept going, we kept going. And as we went up, it kind of got, it got rougher, it got steeper. And I'm pointing to where we were sort of heading um, and it, we, we carried on. The next one, this is where we sort of, we got a bit further than this. But as you can see, the terrain got really rougher and harder and steeper. And we had to climb up to like a very narrow gap uh, where it was all sort of rough stones and um, very difficult to climb. And we were kind of trying to climb up using our hands and our feet. And we kept sliding back and we were getting a bit frightened. I'm thinking, oh, we're doing the right thing here. And actually we gave up and we turned around and came back down again, which I think actually was the right thing to do because we didn't want to end up in hospital being flown off a mountain in a helicopter. So we gave up. And I think that's a bit like life. Sometimes it just gets so tough, and it's just like a big mountain. It's just insurmountable. And you give up, and you think, no, I've had enough of this. Can't carry on. We were a bit tempted to carry on, because there were people coming down saying how amazing it was, and we thought, no, no, we're going back. But even as we went back down, we were just reminded of God's goodness and here's Gareth, we just found this beautiful pool, we found some beautiful pools and rivers, and it was so hot, it was a bit like today, there was no breeze, we thought there'd be a breeze on the top of this mountain, but there wasn't, it was boiling hot, and although we had sunscreen and then clothes, it was still very hot, and God just provided us with this beautiful pool to, to chill in, and we made our descent. Thank you. So... A bit like the Israelites, they had to traverse the difficulties of the mountains. And, you know, we had joys and difficulties, and life is a bit like that sometimes in our journey through life. But when we, you know, compare it to our own lives, and it's not always smooth travelling in life, is it? Our lives are full of challenges. 
and some of them can seem, un seem unsurmountable, but like that mountain was for us. We might feel overwhelmed by what we're facing. So what do we do in our times of difficulty? Psalm, you know, David, um, in the psalm, David says, where does my help come from? I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? I look in my difficult times. Where does my help come from? You know, what, what do we do in our difficult times? Well, maybe you phone a friend. That can be good, you know. Help and support from, from others is great. And God certainly uses other people to, to help us and to support us and guide us. He works through all of us, and that's important. Maybe go to Google, you know, do a quick search on the internet. Well, you might end up just getting really confused maybe by that. There's so much information out there, and maybe that's a bit stressful. Or maybe we just try and solve the problem by ourselves. Do we try and do things in our own strength? Well, depending on what we're facing, it, it might work if you've got the right equipment and experience and information, but it could go badly wrong. And I think sometimes, you know, when we're faced with difficulties in life, um, you know, our own resources, well, they just don't seem to help, do they? And one friend might give one a piece of advice and another might give another piece of advice and it doesn't work and we carry on and we struggle and we can't get through this situation. Or maybe we're just stubborn. Maybe we just say, I don't need help, I'm fine, I don't need any help, you know. But our way of working through those difficulties and coming out the other side isn't, is very often not the best plan. And there's a beautiful verse, isn't there, in Isaiah 55, 8 to 9, where it says, For your thoughts are not my thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. So we need the best sort of help if we're going to come out of a, these difficult situations, don't we? And David says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. When I go through difficulties, where does my help come from? My help comes from God, creator of the universe. Look at those pictures we saw this morning. He is amazing. That's where our help should come from. And there are so many Bible verses that just support, you know, how God is our advisor and his wisdom and his help. Just to quote a few, Psalm 32, verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye upon you. So not only does he just show us the way and teach us, it says his loving eye. He just loves us. He wants the very best for us. Proverbs 4, verse 11. I instruct you in the ways of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. God is the source of wisdom. You know, his wisdom is just beyond our imagination. It's bigger, it's deeper, it's greater than we can ever imagine. What a source of help when we're struggling with things. And Psalm 25, verse 5. Guide me in your truth, and teach me, you are the God, my saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. So when we ask God for help, you know, you have to think, well, you know, what are the outcomes? Are they good? Are they bad? And I think we may need to endure many trials in our lives. And it's not sometimes, I think, until we look back that we see God's hand helping us through it. Life doesn't always go the way we choose. It doesn't always go the way we desire. You know, a bit like walking up that mountain, beautiful views. Life just isn't like that all the time. But God sees the bigger picture. He sees the bigger perspective. He doesn't always take the troubles away, but he does help us through them. I think sometimes, you know, maybe we even hide from asking God for help. Maybe we just believe lies in our heads like, well, I'm, I'm not important other people's problems are far bigger and more important than mine. My little problems are just insignificant. God doesn't care about me. No. Others are more important. God's too busy to help me. And I know I've believed those lies. But they are lies. And we need to remember the truth that God loves us. He loves every detail of our lives. 
And everything, every tiny little thing is so important and important to him. And he desires to help us. So what does he do to help us? And this psalm just expands on, on some of the things that he does, how he helps us. It says, he will not allow your foot to be moved. In some versions it says, or your, or your feet to slip. He holds us secure. He keeps us safe. Despite being in a dangerous place, he holds us and he will protect us and guide us through what we're facing. He comforts us with his strength and his peace in our stormy situations. And if we're tempted to take a wrong direction where our feet may slip and we may run into danger, he's still there and he will provide a way out. In verse 4 it says, he will neither slumber nor sleep. He doesn't take a cat nap. He doesn't have 40 winks. He doesn't go to bed at night. And it really emphasizes that. It says, he will neither slumber nor sleep. It says, and it says, behold, in the New King James Version, which is not a word we use in everyday English, is it really, these days? But when I looked at that, in the Greek, it means, I can't pronounce it, but it says Edo or something like that. But it means, be sure to see. Be sure to see. He does not go to sleep. He is there all the time. And there's a beautiful verse that I often use and think about and share with other people, uh, which is in Hebrews 13, and it's the second verse of part five, um, second half of verse five. And it says, I'm going to read it from the Amplified because it, it's just beautiful there. I will never, under any circumstances, desert you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake you or let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Isn't that just amazing? It's just fantastic. Verse five, the Lord watches over you. He is our keeper. Again, there are so many Bible verses that just support this. Just to quote a few, Joshua 1 verse eight, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Romans 8, 38 and 9. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that beautiful Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So, you know, I get the impression that, you know, God is really for us, isn't he? There are so many verses that tell us of that in his word. Verse five in the Psalm goes on to say, as he watches over us, you know, he's our protector, The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. We certainly know what the sun feels like at the moment, don't we? And I think as the sun, we can easily burn in the sun, and I think I would um, relate to that as sometimes how life's hard times um, can drain us of our strength, don't they? And our energy. And we can be burnt with sorrow and despair and maybe just endless torment through the things that we face. But God is our protector to help us with those trials. And I said before, he doesn't always take those things away from us. But he does protect us from the worst of the the sort of fierce heat of the trials that we face. That can just sap us of our ability to walk through it. God is there with us. He is our provider and our protector. It goes on to say about the moon striking us by night, and I always thought that was a really strange thing, because I thought, well, this, I can understand the sun burning you, but the moon striking you by night, it didn't kind of make much sense to me. But it was thought, apparently, in past generations and in different cultures, that the moon has um, bad spiritual effects and mental effects. And it's actually where the word lunatic comes from, lunar meaning moon. Um, but God says he will protect us from all evil. It doesn't mean we won't face it. It doesn't mean we won't encounter it. It doesn't mean we won't be tempted into it. 
but God will provide his provision and his protection and provide a way out of it. It says he will preserve us from all evil. He will preserve our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. They're very fragile, aren't they? And it's okay to have emotions, but God will help us walk through them and deal with them. And it says he will preserve our going out and our coming in. Now, to preserve means to prevent from decaying. And I think sometimes when, when things are really tough, we can just feel like we want to completely fall apart in what we're facing. It's like we just self-destruct. It can be so hard. Completely overwhelmed. But God preserves us. He gives us the strength to walk through it and carry on and come out the other side. For this time forth and forevermore, God is eternal. He is everywhere. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows us inside out. He made us. He knows us and cares for everything. He's just there, like we said, 24-7. He doesn't sleep. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? But we need to ask for his help. God is so willing to help us. But we need to ask him. You know, if you need the emergency services, they'll come, won't they? But you have to, or somebody has to contact them, have to ask them to come and help. Well, God knows us, and he knows everything we go through, because he sees all and knows all, but he never imposes anything upon us. He's given us free will choice. He wants to save us and rescue us and strengthen us and restore us in our difficulties. But we have to ask him. We have to choose to ask him. And um, I just want to sort of sum up a little bit about um, some of the points I've got here. How do we put Psalm 121 into practice? Well, the first thing is is to choose to go to God. Um, oh, okay, there. Right, me and tech, right, okay. So we choose, we need to choose to go to God for his help. There's a friend of mine, and she says, go to the throne and not the phone. <laughs> and, you know, so it means go to God. Go to God and not, don't go running off and ask everybody else's help first. Go to the throne, which is very good. Very good advice, really. We need to speak to God first, don't we? We need to make looking to God our first priority. Take to him what is troubling us, what we're going through. Pray to him and just say, Help. And that might be all that you can say. We don't need to say a long-winded prayer with lots of words. Sometimes we just need to say, help. And God hears that because he loves us and he will respond to our prayer. He will lead us and direct us in what we should do and where we should go. And there's nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong in seeking help from others and sharing things, you know, with trusted friends. God will certainly use them. And I think, you know, we're very blessed here in Nottingham. We have healing rooms, um, which is, you know, a, a safe place that's available where things can be confidentially shared with a prayer team whose hearts are to seek God, to seek God for help and guidance for the one being com- who comes for prayer and to, to walk alongside them and letting God minister through them to that person. And we have a prayer ministry team here on a Sunday morning, which we're hoping to, to get going again, which has been difficult through COVID. But, but it's a place where you can come and, and ask for prayer for somebody to walk alongside you. God to help you in your troubles. So choose is the first thing. And oh, I'll get this right in a minute. I'm not very good with tech. Oh, no, pressing the wrong button. Okay, there we go. We'll get there in a minute. So refuse the lies. We we talked about believing lies that, you know, God doesn't want to help you and you're not important. Discard the lies. Just discard them. Tell God you're sorry for believing them. But remember the truth, that God loves you. He cares for you. He wants the best for you. You're precious to him. He cares about every detail in your life. And then remember, remember the truth. Who is in control? God. If you ask God to be in control, he's the creator of the universe. We've seen that in Psalm 19 this morning. 
the one who never sleeps, the one who's always there. It's sometimes good to consider how God has helped you in the past. Maybe some of you might keep a journal of, of your, you know, what, what God is saying to you, how God is acting in your life. And it's good to look back and remember how God has helped you before. It helps to build your hope in God showing you through what you fa- your way through what God is, you know, you're facing now. And it's good to read testimonies, stories of what God has done for others as well. And there are, there, are good story, there are good things in the Bible that speak of what God has done. And there are also many books out there that speak of God's testimony, God's story of what people, you know, God's done in their lives. However, do not despair, I would say. Sometimes you can read an amazing book with amazing testimony and then you might think, well, God's done it for them, but he hasn't done it for me. But just remember, you know, they've come to their end point of their journey. You're still going through your difficult time, maybe. But God is faithful, and he will bring to completion what he starts. So be encouraged how God has worked for other people and believe that he can do it for you because nothing is impossible with God. And it can be very quick. It can be very, God can instantly step in and change a situation, but it can be a long time. Think of the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years, but God sustained them through it. Remember the truth of who God is and his strength and his help and his wisdom. Maybe just write verses down out to the Bible that really speak to you about that. Keep them somewhere where you're going to see them every day. Take it in. Take the word into your mind, into your heart, and remember the truth of it. So remember, choose God's help. Refuse their lies. Remember the truth of who God is. Focus on him. Entrust him with your challenges and let him guide you through them. I just want to finish by playing um, a piece of music. Um, it's, it's based on Psalm 121 and it's called I Lift My Eyes Up and it's by somebody called Brian Jorgson um, who's written various worship songs. And I just suggest we use it as a time just to reflect on what we've been thinking about and to consider how God's, you need God's help in whatever you're facing right now. It might be something very small, it might be something big, I don't know. There are lots of pictures, there aren't any words, I'm afraid, but it's Psalm 121, and hopefully you'll hear the words. Um, but um, lots of pictures come up as well, and I think sometimes God actually can use pictures to speak to us. Lots and lots of pictures in this psalm. So let God just speak to you, whether it be through the words, through the pictures. Let's just reflect on on what God wants to do in helping us in our daily challenges. Thank you.
lift my eyes up to the maker of heaven and earth, to the one who never sleeps, watching over me. Oh, how I need 